wanted to thank you, little morsel. Your actions help set us free of our hated prison. Now, listen to the words I say. Mulamnir wants you to understand the challenge before you. Our puppet, Eurexia, commands a legion of soldiers, an army of necromancers, and a horde of undead. Add my dragon brothers, and the hopelessness of your cause becomes obvious. You and Abnathon set us free. You released us from the halls of Colossus. For that, I offer you this one last chance to survive. If you and the Battle Mage leave elsewhere, my brothers and I will not hunt you down. Then you will die, but not before we slaughter your friends and set fire to elsewhere. Once we reduce this land to so much ash, only then will I tear you apart. So promises Mulamnir, whose claws have dealt a thousand deaths. Leave elsewhere, little morsel. Tell the battle mage, if I see you again, you will die. Five Claw, are you all right? I heard what the dragon said. Perhaps my confidence was a bit misplaced. That creature was much bigger than it appeared when it flew over the camp. I never jump without first knowing where my feet will land. Also, I have very sharp claws. We lost so many today. The dragon, that Mulamnir, it has much to answer for. We defeated the Necromancer and shut down one of their undead foundries. We need you and Tarn, despite my dislike of the man. But what the dragon intimated about Euraxia, it called her its puppet. Hmm, I fear the dragons control the Rimen throne now. Yes, you must do that. I will join you after... After I take care of the remains of my soldiers. They died bravely and deserve to receive the proper sacraments. Go to Riverhold. I will see you there. There you are. If we've had this conversation already, then I wanted to thank you for the useful advice. But if I haven't seen you since our talk at that mysterious gravestone, which seems much more likely, then I could really use your help. Did I mention the dreams? Visions, really? They come and go without warning, like seeing through someone else's eyes. Quite disconcerting in an interesting sort of way. Anyway, 
My trusty shovel and I, we searched that entire grave, and it was gone. The Petraeus head, the dreams, the uh, visions, they drew me there, but someone got to it before I did. I have the strangest sensation in the pit of my tummy. It could be the cobweb porridge I had for breakfast, or something bad is about to happen. Well, that's sort of like leaping from the cliffs of failure without a rope, or at least without tying the end off first. I can't tell you how many times I've made that mistake. Oh, Abner wants to see you. He's in the town hall with the cat's general. At this point, we need to come up with a plan that takes into account Euraxians, Necromancers, and Dragons. I proposed a few options, but Goreshri wasn't sold on any of them. Tell me, what of Chimera and the source of the undead? You paint a troubling picture, my friend. Still, we need to celebrate every victory we achieve. I fear such triumphs will be few and far between. Do you have anything else to report? My half-sister likes to think that she's in charge. She won't take kindly to being called a puppet. As for leaving elsewhere, I think not. Obviously, this Mulam Nir fears us. Otherwise, the dragon wouldn't have deigned to talk to you. Every conversation I have with Cadwell makes my head throb, but one mystery at a time, if you please. Now, if only I could get my half-sister to listen to reason and see that the dragons are using her. A Pali? I may not like her, but we are family. Besides, it would give the Khajiit time to regroup. You're beginning to think like a Tharn, my friend. Here, take this. Garish Ri gave it to me, but I refuse to accept payment for my services. A Pali with Euraxia is a capital idea. I'll send word to Rimen to expect us. I imagine my half-sister will treat us as befits my station and agree to the meeting. Attend to any other matters if you must, then see me when you're ready to leave. It just so happens I already have one. It involves distracting my half-sister with wit, charm, and words she barely comprehends. Oh, and you. Euraxia never could resist a pretty face. You'll pretend to be my bodyguard and personal valet. Consider it obfuscation to hide your true purpose. We don't want to give Euraxia a reason to react poorly to overtures of reconciliation. Not that I expect to reach an accord, but still. Meet me in Rimen and we'll enter the palace together. Go on, go on. I'm capable of traveling to Rimen on my own. We'll meet up at the city gates and go to the palace from there. I'm relatively certain Euraxia will honor the parley, but be prepared for anything. She's still a Tharn, after all. We're not very close, in case I haven't made that abundantly clear. Euraxia is an accomplished mage in her own right. My younger sibling has always been ambitious, but I didn't realize the extent of her aspirations until the Frostfall coup. About six years ago or so, while Emperor Varen was busy with his rebellion, Euraxia took advantage of the confusion to lead a column of Nibonese mercenaries into northern elsewhere. She declared herself Queen of Rimen and its adjacent fiefs. Of course not. The Khajiit called her the Usurper Queen, remember? Once Varen became Emperor, he had other problems to worry about. Same with Queen Iren. As long as the Alliance War occupies her forces, the Khajiit are on their own out here. This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen by marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army. A parley with the Usurper Queen? I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. She marched into an equina with them.
Thank <laughs> you.